Well, I think capacity building has always been an important element, both in the evaluation project and in the three phases now of measure evaluation. Initially, I'd say pretty early on, both in the evaluation project at the beginning of phase one, the capacity building was perhaps focused more on the individual technical capacity, because I think at that time, the there just weren't many m and &E professionals out there. There were not many public health professionals with those basic m and &E technical skills. Consequently, we started off more with the master's programs and the individual short-term trainings. Um, there was a technical assistance component in the evaluation project and early in phase one, but it was much smaller than it was now. So there was some opportunity for on-the-job training, but the capacity building was focused more on the uh, formal training and workshops, that mm -hmm. kind of thing. The early partnerships with Mahidol University and even the University of Costa Rica, I believe, in the evaluation projects in phase one, they were the foundation on what has evolved into the regional training partnerships that we've really been implementing throughout most of measure evaluation. I think they provided great opportunities to learn from each other and ultimately convinced us that the regional training partners was the model that we wanted to pursue. Well, the summer institutes were a lot of fun and they provided a good opportunity to expose participants to a wide range of faculty with expertise in difficult, different technical areas because they were based here in North Carolina. We could bring a lot of different faculty in to, to the participants who were to teach the participants who were uh, attending the workshop. Um, and at the time, that Summer Institute model was quite a popular model, and I think it allowed us to develop a state-of-the-art curriculum um, because we could draw on this wide, large number of faculty that were involved. However, over time, and building on those early experiences with regional training partners that we just talked about, we decided that um, a, a model that built capacity of both of the individuals who were t attending the workshops and also built capacity of institutional partners to provide m and &E training had the potential to achieve greater long-term results. And that model has allowed us to also offer training in French and Spanish, for example. Um, the field of M&E has developed a lot since those M early m and &E uh, summer institutes, but I think the foundation of the curriculum that we use today still has, it, it has its roots back in that, su those summer institutes, so you can still see those echoes of it, even though the material has evolved and been updated since then. Oh, I think M&E uh, capacity has evolved tremendously. Um, when I started in the M&E field, even before being director, there were very few organized M&E units in national programs or even in, in non-governmental organizations, and there were very few professionals with M&E skills. Um, that has totally changed, and I think there's a whole professional field opened up in monitoring and evaluation for public health programs. Many countries at least have have now national M&E units that are staffed with more than one person, and that's also reflected in better availability of data, particularly for HIV, but other, in other sectors as well. I think our training partners play a critical role in helping to meet the demand for trained M&E professionals through both the pre-service training and the in-service workshops. Um, such formal training I think also helps to establish M&E as a profession. Um, the challenge is that the demand for training for trained M&E professionals is so great it will outstrip the ability of any one institution to meet it. So developing ways to expand high quality M&E training uh, in the future is going to be critical. Well, when I became the director of measure evaluation, which was at the end of phase one, we were working with regional training partners, but project staff was still doing a lot of the training themselves. And we, we did involve the training partners staff as well, but a lot of the training was being done by the partner, by us, our own staff. We made a decision at the beginning of phase two to make transitioning to regional training partners, offering the trainings uh, independently, a, an explicit goal of our capacity building strategy. And that required significant leadership and commitment from the individual institutions that we were working with. And we're very grateful for them for that commitment. Um, another change I would say is that there's been a reduction in the provision of scholarships for the masters and for the short-term workshops, kind of move away from that. Um, 
I believe that the scholarships are very important both for the increasing access to the training for the individual participants, particularly from small NGOs and government agencies that might not have training funds. Um, and also, but also I think they're important for reinforcing that institutional commitment to these programs. But at the same time, they're hard to sustain. And I think in the long run, it's in everybody's interest to diversify the funding base for these ME training. I think what we really see is that the data and the wider evidence base we now have on global health has advanced considerably thanks to the efforts that have been made to build the, both the individual and institutional capacity in M&E. At the global level, you can probably see this most clearly in the data on the Millennium Development Goals or that are provided on HIV through the UNGAS reporting system. But I think gains have also been made at the country level in informing health sector reviews, for example, or in developing um, national health strategies and plans which can ha now have more evidence on which to, to base those plans and reviews. Um, I think even at the NGO level, at smaller organizational levels, the data quality and use has improved, although there's still a long way to go, of course, but I, I really think there has been tremendous progress made. Well, I think the demand for M&E capacity building is going to continue to grow for the foreseeable future. Um, and I think it's going to need to increasingly take place at the country level because there's just such a large demand for large numbers of M&E professionals at country level. Um, therefore, I think that the networking between institutions that provide M&E capacity building will be vital to meeting that demand because there's going to be such a big demand. Um, in addition, I think that effective m &E systems require organizations and structures that support the use of information, so organizational elements of m and &E capacity building are going to continue to grow in importance. Yeah. I think high quality, effective M&E presents a number of technical and organizational challenges and a lot of M&E systems still struggle with shortages of qualified technical staff and weak organizational structures to support M&E, despite the tremendous progress that's been made that we just talked about. Um, strengthening M&E capacity at individual organizational and systems level will be critical to uh, realizing the potential that I think M&E has to offer to improve health and development. Well, I think the regional training institutions we've been working with through measure evaluation have tremendous experience to share and they can play a critical leadership role in building networks and supporting and influencing the direction of M&E capacity building in the future. The workshops and master's programs offered by the training partners are very highly regarded globally and provide an excellent foundation um, to build on, both providing advanced regional training and also in supporting countries as they start to develop their own national M&E tra training programs. Great. Yeah, I believe that building partnerships and sharing knowledge is critical to long-term success. The world is constantly changing and we all need to be able to adapt and respond to change. Keeping abreast of the M&E field and sharing that knowledge and experience will be critical to staying at the cutting edge of the field and responding successfully to new opportunities. I think the network of training partners is an exciting development and I see supporting the successful launch of that network is going to be a priority for the project for the remainder of this phase. Well, I truly believe that the regional workshops and master's programs are one of the great successes of measure evaluation. The training itself is widely recognized as state of the art, and I am constantly meeting people in the field who are working in the field of M&E who have been through one of these pro training programs at some point in their careers, and they consistently speak highly of their experience. Um, what I find most exciting, though, is the individual institutional commitment to M&E capacity building and our training partners, which means we can now offer so much more than the project could do alone and uh, will ultimately be what determines the impact and legacy of this work. m and &E provides information that is essential to managing health and development programs, determining whether such programs are achieving their objectives and allowing managers to make adjustments to better achieve program goals and to ensure accountability. 
we live in an information, information age and stakeholders at all levels expect information, demand information to make decisions and communicate. Um, I think it's hard for any organization to be successful in today's environment without an appreciation for information and a strong m and system. Well, the world is becoming increasingly wired and e-learning and virtual communities of practice, I think, offer unprecedented opportunities for people to connect and share experiences and learn across geographic and organizational boundaries. I think basic learning content can be made available efficiently through e-learning platforms and people, especially those early in their careers, are very used to learning through electronic media and I think it has a lot of uh, potential. At the same time, I think e-learning and virtual communities practice have to be implemented thoughtfully and well to capitalize on their potential, so they shouldn't be seen as easy options. Uh, we really need to do a good job and quality is just as important in the electronic platforms as in any other platform. And I think the sheer volume of information available electronically means that you really have to offer something extra to be valued and, and because the, the competition for people's time and attention is very intense in the electronic world. Well, I think there's been a recent upsurge of interest in evaluation uh, in the past couple of years, and I think this partly reflects an increasing interest in understanding why things are happening as well as what is happening, because the monitoring provides a little more of the what. Evaluation research raises additional technical and practical design challenges and requires rigorous but still practical designs. Um, I think there's going to be a growing demand for skills in the design and implementation of evaluation. And I think there will be challenges in meeting the high expectations for evaluation that are out there at the moment within the context of real world programs. But I think this will also be an exciting time in the field because we need to develop new methods to address the practical challenges and we have the opportunities to uncover new knowledge about the effectiveness of programs. I think that we have been a big part of the growth in monitoring and evaluation, certainly not the only one. There's a lot of partners that have contributed to building monitoring and evaluation um, over the last decade or two, really two decades, I suppose. So, and I think we've been a big part of that. And I think our tools, our methods are well known. We're very well respected. I think we've influenced the direction of the field. Um, and, and so I, th I think there's a lot that we have to be proud of in the project and that we will continue to have lots to be proud of in the future.